So my topic today I want to talk about is uh, adaptive behavior. Uh, adaptive behavior is um, a construct that relates to the skills that we've learned throughout our life. Um, and there's skills and behaviors that society expects of everyone. Um, and these uh, skills uh, are um, skills that we put in place uh, uh, at different ages and are based on expectations that uh, our community and society has for people at different ages. So we expect kids to be able to master certain skills uh, at a young age like walking and talking and playing and interacting socially with their peers. Uh, and as they get older we expect them to have uh, certain uh, functional academic skills, um, school behavior, uh, and as we get older, we have work skills and independent living skills and money earning and money manage management skills. So um, adaptive behavior is an important construct throughout our life and is uh, one of the criteria we have and use to um, determine if a person has an intellectual disability. Um, adaptive behavior has been part of the diagnosis of intellectual disability since the early 60s. Um, and, and is along with um, deficits in intellectual functioning um, is sort of the two major prongs of a diagnosis of intellectual disability and uh, the third one being age of onset. Adaptive behavior although has been part of the definition for more than 50 years is has often been subsumed as almost a secondary or optional uh, criterion uh, but um, what has been um, even um, uh, re-emphasized, I should say, in the most recent edition of the Diagnostic and Statistical Manual, the DSM-5, has been the reiteration of the importance of adaptive behavior, uh, which now is, uh, the DSM-5 is now perfectly in line with the American Association on Intellectual and Developmental Disabilities definition which has emphasized adaptive behavior as an important prong in diagnosing intellectual disability since, um, since 1959. Um, and most recently in the 2002 definition, AAIDD has defined adaptive behavior as essentially three domains, three important um, skill areas, which are conceptual skills, which relate in large part to um, um, social, um, um, academic functioning, uh, conceptual, um, problem solving, uh, in everyday living type skills. So conceptual skills. The second area uh, are social skills and those social skills can be interpersonal skills, understanding the social rules of social engagement, but also high order um, social adaptive behavior. Um, uh, much of it coming out of the research of Steve Greenspan, looking at gullibility and naivete as we become adults, those are important constructs and more complex social behavior. And the third prong, along with conceptual and social, are practical skills. Uh, practical skills relate to um, self-care skills, but also um, domestic skills, home living, as well as employment and money management. <clears throat> so since 2002, AIDD uh, has defined adaptive behavior as conceptual, social, and practical. <clears throat> and in the most recent edition or revision of the DSM, the American Psychiatric Association has adopted <clears throat> that definition of adaptive behavior. So now both AIDD and um, the DSM um, are in perfect alignment as we define adaptive behavior as part of the construct of intellectual uh, disability. Um, and this is an important area um, and because uh, many people uh, view um, intellectual functioning as somewhat of a static uh, construct and uh, it's um, fairly stable as we get older in terms of being able to intervene educationally or in terms of programmatic intervention to make improvements in a person's uh, intellectual skills. <clears throat> but adaptive behavior is extremely malleable and, and um, thus more important when we speak of intervention and providing supports. Uh, with appropriate supports and intervention, we can actually improve substantially a person's adaptive skills and adaptive behavior. 
And when you think of, about adaptive behavior um, in, in individuals who have an intellectual disability, often those are the behaviors or the, the um, uh, modifiers that really uh, make that person noticeable. Uh, and when we teach and, and the person learns uh, adaptive behavior that are appropriate for their age group, uh, very often that's when uh, we, we think of it as uh, people blending in uh, and, and uh, doing what other, peop other individuals of their age are expected to do, and, and they do, and that really improves the success in terms of employment, uh, school performance, and so forth. So uh, teaching and learning adaptive behavior is an important construct, and often a construct that has been um, somewhat secondary to intellectual functioning, and, and uh, I'm excited uh, with this uh, change in the DSM because actually the DSM for the first time has really set aside intellectual functioning as a secondary criterion. Um, AAIDD defines adaptive behavior as a binary condition. You either have it or you don't. Uh, and then you may have mild, uh, moderate, or other level of intensity of deficits in intellectual functioning. And you may have mild, moderate, uh, severe, or uh, other levels of functioning in adaptive behavior. And that's another important area of living. Uh, as well as supports. You may require different levels of supports to be successful across life areas. But you really, uh, we haven't um, reduced the condition, the complex condition of intellectual disability to a severity level. In the American Association on Intellectual and uh, Developmental Disabilities definition since uh, 1992. <clears throat> the DSM has always um, had severity levels for the condition and they've always used mild, moderate, severe, profound. But the big change that we saw in 2013 is that that severity level shifted away from intellectual functioning, or IQ, onto understanding and assessing the person's adaptive behavior, which is a major paradigm shift for the DSM, uh, and which has really placed a greater importance on the assessment and understanding of a person's adaptive behavior. Uh, because now uh, we really conceptualize uh, both at AIDD and, ad and APA or the DSM as adaptive behavior being at least as important, if not more important, than IQ. Um, and that, for, for me, is really uh, an interesting timing because we are at the uh, American Association on Intellectual and Developmental Disability uh, now releasing this year, um, in, uh, at least in 2015, the new instrument that we've been working on called the Diagnostic Adaptive Behavior Scale, which is uh, a new adaptive behavior that we've been working on for the past six years. And the, the DABS, the Diagnostic Adaptive Behavior Scale, is focused on um, a rigorous assessment of conceptual, uh, social, and practical adaptive skills. Um, and the DABS was really developed using modern psychometric theory called item response theory, where we have focused on developing items and retaining items across the age span that are really most important in discerning whether or not a person has significant deficits or not in adaptive behavior. Uh, for example, the DABS focuses on uh, conceptual skills in a five-year-old that are relevant to a five-year-old. Uh, unlike other standardized instruments, um, the DABs will not inquire about items such as banking uh, or um, uh, money management in five and six-year-olds. Those items have been eliminated through uh, the item response theory process. And so the items uh, in the specific age categories are really age determined, as one would expect, because as we uh, age, different skills are expected. And deficits in, in certain skill areas are more relevant uh, to determination of whether or not a person has average adaptive behavior, below average, or significantly below average. So we're very much excited with um, sort of the convergence of the field around uh, the importance and relevance of the construct of adaptive behavior, and that's why I want to focus 
wanted to focus this talk on adaptive behavior uh, because it is really one of the constructs that influences uh, substantially the, the, the level, I should say, the level of support an individual may have in their different life areas, whether it's at home, at school, at work, uh, engage in the community and so forth. So these adaptive behaviors, more we can teach and the person can learn, in essence, the more invisible they are because they blend in and they do what other people expect of adults or uh, adolescents or kids of a certain age to do. And ultimately, I think that's all our goal is to blend in, whether we have a disability or not, is to um, do things that are expected of us and be successful and be engaged in our community. So we're, we're hopeful that the um, arrival of the Diagnostic Adaptive Behavior will help, Diagnostic Adaptive Behavior Scale will help with um, uh, bringing forth the construct of adaptive behavior and bringing a tool for clinicians to be able to use this instrument uh, in a, a more efficient way. Um, again, the DABS is a, a much shorter, um, a lean and mean instrument, uh, which we think will provide a very robust uh, diagnostic information across the age span around the decision point. Uh, it will not, although it's a deficit-driven instrument, <clears throat> because unfortunately, whether we like it or not, the way we diagnose intellectual disability is still based on understanding a person's skills, but more importantly, understanding their deficits. And that's just the way our, our, our diagnostic process works today. Perhaps one day it'll change. Uh, and unlike the measurement of supports, which is much more focused on what makes uh, or what, what is needed for a person to be successful, the way we assess both intelligence and adaptive behavior to diagnose an intellectual disability is really based on what they can or cannot do. Um, so the DABS, although it, it, it will be a robust instrument and our research has shown that it's very sensitive and specific around the diagnostic cutoff, uh, remains a relatively short item, uh, a short tool with uh, approximately 75 items in total, which compares favorably well to other uh, uh, instruments available now which are all uh, in excess of 200. Uh, 200 plus items. So we're excited um, and I wanted to share with you all um, the, um, the importance of adaptive behavior as we uh, one, diagnose uh, or determine whether a person has intellectual disability or not, but also as we get a better understanding of a person's overall functioning. Um, and I think we have right now a convergence in the whole field uh, where um, uh, all professional organizations are really uh, appropriately placing importance uh, on the construct of adaptive behavior uh, over really the importance uh, and role of uh, IQ or intellectual functioning uh, in understanding the condition that we call intellectual disability. So I hope you'll um, look at the AIDD website and, and discover uh, our uh, new instrument called the Diagnostic Adaptive Behavior Scale. I hope you'll get to use it. It should be a helpful tool for clinicians working in uh, clinic areas, um, uh, counselors and psychologists working in schools, teachers, uh, and other professionals who uh, support kids, adolescents, and young adults with uh, intellectual disability. Uh, thank you.